welcome back. Well, Sunday here in Australia, Bitcoin's kind of holding, but this is interesting, a follow-up to uh, a story I did the other day where someone said that they believed XRP was gonna outperform Bitcoin and Ethereum. So we've got the daily hodl here. Let's have a look. XRP set to outperform Ethereum when Bitcoin rec reclaims this key level, says top, ana top analysis. Top crypto analysis and trader, Credible Crypto, believes XRP is in a position to outpace Ethereum once the next leg of the bull market resumes. Credible Crypto is sharing a chart with his 66,000 Twitter followers that he says depicts the bullish market structure of XRP, XRP ETH pair. People are starting to take notice. I'll say it again, expect XRP to outperform ETH over the next coming months. Has nothing to do with fundamentals or my affinity towards either coin, just the charts, plain and simple. All right, 66,000 followers. Uh, he might know a thing or two. Uh, and again, a lot of people have been talking about this. He's not the only one. It's that falling wedge and they believe it's getting ready to boost up. Before XRP can unleash its bullish potential, Credible Crypto believes that Bitcoin has to first reclaim a key level. We are going to get some relief across the board. BTC likely to 10,650-ish and ETH to 360-ish. Break those levels and the bottom may be in. Fail to do so and we, and we get one final leg down. Regardless, the worst is now over, in his opinion. Credible is not the only crypto analysis who thinks that the worst may be over for Bitcoin. The trader known in the industry as Bitcoin Jack believes the King Crypto is likely to hold support around 10,000 and relaunch the bull rally. If BTC is in a bullish trend, this is a level of support that should hold, historically at pullback levels that in a bullish market always held. If not, we are in, we are in for far more trouble, but I think the odds of holding support uh, and bouncing are good. So there we go, but let's go and have a look at this. This is another story. Massive Bitcoin whale moves 8,500 BTC and 220,000 Ethereum. Could there be a sell-off coming? So the weekend's not over yet. Obviously, it's Sunday night here in Australia. It's sort of Sunday morning over in the States. We still could see a sell-off. We'll just have to wait and see. Bitcoin uh, broke 10,500 a little bit earlier today, and I tweeted that out, tweeted that out saying, you know, Bitcoin's broken 10.5. Uh, but will it hold? And at the moment, it's not. It's just under 10.5. It's not to say it won't find its way back up above, but at the moment, 10,500 seems like a bit of a barrier for it to get over. We're above for a while, and then we've fallen back down, and we're really struggling to get through that. So we'll have to have a look. Another really interesting story I had, I found. Look, I'm, hu I'm very, very bullish on DeFi, but not anything in DeFi. There's so much scammy stuff out there at the moment. And, you know, you go on Uniswap and I think I saw an article, 60 plus percent of the uh, yield farming and DeFi stuff that is on Uniswap at the moment are scams. They're legit scams. So please be very, very careful when getting into DeFi. You know, for me, I'm sticking with the kind of tried and tested stuff. So I like REN. I like Synthetics Network. I like Kyber Network. I like Aave. I like Carver. They're the things that I've put uh, my money into. Now, it's not financial advice, and I'm not telling you to do the same. I'm just saying I believe in those projects. They've been around for a while. There's faces to the company. You know, yeah. I'm bullish on those, but do your own research. But let's have a look at this article because I think it's really uh, interesting. DeFi will exceed the performance of Bitcoin in five years. Imagine where Bitcoin's going to be in five years. And so imagine where... Uh, DeFi could push to it. It's not that they'll be worth more than Bitcoin. It's just that they'll possibly do five times as well. So, you know, if Bitcoin does a 20x in the next five years, well, imagine what some of the good DeFi stuff can do. But we'll go on. Dan Moorhead, CEO of Pantera Capital, suggests that DeFi domain will outperform Bitcoin in the next five years. Uh, Dan Moorhead, one of the largest investment companies, uh, CEO of Pantera Capital, one of the largest investment companies in the crypto space, with half a billion dollars in assets under its management, claimed that DeFi has the potential to grow 100 times more than Bitcoin in the next five years. In an interview with Cointelegraph, Moorhead stated that despite the weak performance of his company's altcoin funds in 2019, that was the bear market, it was pretty hard to do well, the situation has been reversed in the past few months due to the explosive growth of decentralized finance protocols and tokens. Moorhead stated that as the end of August, 
as of the end of August, Pantera's digital asset fund has been at 123% profit since the beginning of the year. The world woke up to DeFi and this area has followed. Defending that, Bitcoin has already identified itself as digital gold and an effective store of value. The CEO emphasised that its upward potential is relatively limited. Maybe the price could go to a million, but that's really the limit of its possibility because the market value of Bitcoin thus reaches a figure of 20 million, 20 trillion in the whole world currency, which is just 100 trillion. So, 100 trillion. so it'll be a fifth of all the currency. So that's not to say that Bitcoin doesn't you know, have any upside and it maybe it gets to a million, maybe it doesn't. You know, We'll have to wait and see. It'll probably take a while for it to get to a million. But if DeFi can 100x what uh, Bitcoin's going to do, and I think that's probably, you know, quite possibly a fair exaggeration, but we'll just have to wait and see. But either way, I think the upside for the really, really good DeFi projects is massive, and uh, that's why I've invested in a number of them. Uh, and I'm still investing uh, on the dips and things like that. Not too much now, but, you know, if I've got some money and there's a good dip, I'll most likely get some more synthetics and some more, you know, Aave and things like that. I'm, yeah, again, I'm massively bullish on DeFi, but here's something that uh, is going to really decide how well DeFi is going to do. DeFi mainstream impossible until DEX's integrate layer two, expert says. And I would have to agree, and I've, I've done a number of videos on the price of gas on, on ETH at the moment. It's, you know, it's not too bad now, it's lower than it was, but it's still too much. The everyday Joe, they're not going to be all right with it costing them $40, $50 to do a transaction on a, on a, a smart contract platform. You know, synthetics, you know, I love synthetics, but at the moment I just can't afford to use it. You know, my, the rewards I get, they don't equal up to the amount of uh, gas fees that I have to pay. So I haven't been able to use it and I'm really disappointed in that, but I'm hoping some layer two stuff gets rolled out soon uh, and this fix, but we'll go on. DeFi is booming again, but experts caution that mainstream won't occur without decentralized exchanges integrating layer two. The rapid growth of decentralized finance sector, DeFi, uh, took a shock after the recent 17.5% drop in Bitcoin price. However, it is likely that the DeFi sector will continue to grow as Bitcoin recovers, especially as users continue to look for high yield strategies as a means to earn interest on their Bitcoin and crypto holdings. If the sector continues to grow as it did in the first half of 2020, the Ethereum network will find itself a, you know, between a rock and a hard place. In recent times, the network has shown se several symptoms of being overloaded and unable to scale. So true, Ethereum, uh, is, its fees are horrible. These symptoms include exponential increases in gas usage, which leads to higher fees and slower confirmation times. This in turn has made some smart contracts uh, way too expensive to use and also causes significant challenges to leveraged uh, DeFi investors and borrowers who are unable to quickly adjust their collateral to avoid liquidations. I haven't had those problems yet, but I can imagine uh, how that would work for people who are you know, quite leveraged. Clearly, there is a need for viable solutions that can help sustain the growth of DeFi. The nascent sector is undoubtedly one of the most promising uh, facets of decentralized blockchain technology and is certainly the biggest use case for Ethereum blockchain at the time. So much so that Uniswap is the biggest, Uniswap is the biggest gas guzzler on the network on the network, followed by Tether, according to on-chain data uh, resource, ETH gas station. In order to scale the network and ensure its long-term success, the Ethereum development team has been working on Ethereum 2.0, which would bring a completely new version of Ethereum to reality, turning it into a proof-of-state network with multiple side chains that can simultaneously uh, work to improve transactions through uh, transaction throughput and scalability. Look, at first, from everything that I've read, Ethereum 2.0 is more about just the staking. So there's a ton of uh, layer two solutions out there at the moment. They just haven't been adopted, uh, you know, by wallets uh, and things like that. And, you know, I read an article a while ago that Synthetix was looking at rolling out a layer two solution, not waiting for ETH 2.0. And I can only hope that that happens really, really soon. Because, again, you know, I do think DeFi is going to be massive in the future. Unbelievably massive. 
you know, whether it's any of the ones that I've put my money into, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But that space is huge, absolutely huge. But this is, yes, definitely what's going to hold it back. So last but not least, let's have a quick look at the market. So 350 billion. So it just, it just keeps growing at the moment, which is good. We're still not up near that 400 billion where we were, excuse me, a couple of weeks ago. But we're slowly getting there. But I do think there's, a, not so much I think, but there's definitely a possibility that we could have another sell-off. We're, we're finding it hard to get above 10,500. We just keep rejecting off it. We might have a leg down, go down into the 9,000s before we come back up again. Let's have a quick look at the Bitcoin chart and we'll see. All right, so this was the trend line I was waiting to see. Would we break, would we roll over or would we break through it? And the good thing is we broke through it. So this trend line is now invalid, but we're just going to have to wait and see. This is such a, this is a spinning top candlestick at the moment, which means it kind of could go either way. I mean, the top one's a little longer, the, the bottom one's quite short. So this could still fall over and we could end up closing below this. We're just going to have to wait and see. But as we can see, 10,500 at the moment is a real key level that we need to be able to break through and then start to use this as support. Because as you can see, we only really used it as support twice and it only wicked down and it didn't even touch it either time. So otherwise we kind of broke through it and it was just this Bart Simpson sort of pattern pushed up, bit uh, jumpy and then we fell back down. And now it's, it is absolutely being used as resistance at the moment. So we need to do a resistance support flip. We need to flip this uh, resistance and make it support and then make our way up. But you will have to wait and see. It does look like this 100 day moving average seems to be kind of, it, it's a bit of support at the moment. Uh, it was uh, a little bit of resistance there, but kind of support and a little bit of resistance. And again, we'll have to wait and see. Do we come down and do we hit this? Do we possibly come down and hit the 200 day moving average? Time will tell, but again, we just got to zoom out. And I say this all the time, zoom out, ladies and gentlemen, we are in an uptrending market and Bitcoin has been for a long time. Yes, there's pullbacks and bear markets, but really since, let's say the 15th of December, 2018. So this was really a kind of year long bear market. Since then, it's only been going up, but it's cryptocurrency. So you have up, big fall off. You have up and a big fall off. So time will tell. We'll know obviously in a couple of days uh, what's going to happen here. And I am hoping that 10,500 will uh, soon become support. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that game train. And I'll see you next time.